Okay, we're back with part four of our study of survival analysis in R. And now, uh, this is again a bit of a methodological issue in survival analysis, but we have to figure out um, when we are going to fit uh, a, our analysis. We have to uh, one of the steps that we have to do is to study which particular probability distribution uh, provides the best fit. And so in section 5 we do that. There's a function called serve reg, which is a way to run a regression on a survival object. And one of its options is to specify that distribution. So again, as I mentioned, we're going to Looks like we're going to run a lot of code. Here there's really just you know, six lines of the same thing where we, we check different distributions. And then we can take a look at how those fits uh, come out. And we're basically looking at the log likelihood um, as a measure of what fits best. And in the case of this data, uh, we're going to find that logistic uh, regression, lo logistic distributions really do do the best. Um, we're, we're not going to find significant improvements uh, going out of that. Now it turns out that the FlexServe package uh, has a little bit extra. So in the earlier I mentioned a little bit of extra oomph from some other packages and there are a few other distributions that you might want to examine. Uh, gamma, generalized gamma distribution, uh, those things are available via the FlexServe package. And so if you look at those, they will um, give you some slightly different numbers uh, for the <coughs> for you know, other distributions. And the FlexServe package also gives you a nice plotting feature. This is a, a big plus where we can plot the fit. Um, and so uh, what we're trying to do, th this enables us to visualize it a bit better, is we've got the survival curve as empirically estimated by the Kaplan-Meier process, right? So this is a Kaplan-Meier survival curve in the jagged black and the fit, the abstract function that we're trying to fit to that curve is in red with a confidence interval represented by the dotted lines. So we want these two, the black and the red lines, to get close to each other and a lot of times you can really see that from the, the plots themselves. You can see that these gammas start to get us a bit closer, um, a little bit more flexibility. Uh, although the log normal is, you know, is a simpler representation of the function that that also gets us really pretty close. It's pretty good. Uh, again, there's some judgment involved in what fits here, but but this is what you would, um, you know, take a look at. And those numbers for the log likelihood test are, you can just extract those directly. In, in terms of an absolute number that's the best, the generalized gamma is the best, but uh, the log normal um, is really quite close. Uh, and I argue, it's sort of my opinion in this particular analysis, that the log normal is, is good enough. Um, and if we do a, a significance test, uh, we can find that <coughs> they're not actually significantly different from each other. Um, so, so in the end, by the end of this analysis, I think a lot of the the final models are in the log normal. Um, but you know, all of that uh, ability to run the tests and extract the numbers comes out of this uh, fit that is generated. So we can either do that, again, just to review back to the beginning of Section 5, the serve reg function uh, does that. It provides a, a lot of information about the fit uh, with a certain set of distributions. 
and the FlexServe package provides additional distributions as well as a nice plotting function um, along with it. So you can pick and choose between those two uh, versions. Okay, so this is another aside from the direct path of the analysis of trying to understand the breast cancer data, but one thing that um, you might be asked to do in survival analysis is generate what's called a life table, which um, the life table is a function that generates, um, I think we need to say 100 here, life tab 100. Okay, actually the code itself does not um, contain a fully worked out example of <coughs> life table because it doesn't fit for this an analysis. But just so you're aware that this KMServe package uh, does have the life table generating um, ability. Um, if we look at an example of that, uh, there's a life table in the Wikipedia page. The life table um, is, you might have, you might see these in actuarial work more frequently is uh, a table that just will tell you the proportion of people who are surviving to a particular age and this is one way that life expectancy is computed right so we we can't measure every person from birth to death uh, to get this uh, super precise life expectancy however we do observe the percentage of people dying at different age levels each year Right. And so from that we extract a uh, proportion that would die and then we carry that over from year to year uh, to produce the life expectancy. This information is all sort of encoded in, uh, in a Kaplan-Meier table as well, but this format of generating the life table is something that is, is sometimes asked for. If you need to do that in R, uh, once again, library KM serve and the life tab function. Okay, so now uh, the rest of section six is, um, I'm going to kind of zip through this because this is details of the, the analysis that was originally done on this data. Uh, I mentioned that we are going to use log transforms because it fits the data better. So I kind of rerun the same analysis, uh, trying to generate those fits for um, everything with uh, the log transformed data. And it turns out that, you know, certain things fit a little bit better that way. Other things look a little bit wonky, like that uh, this, this plot is obviously way off. Um, that looks a little better. Um, generalized gamma. And here's the log normal. Uh, log normal gives us a pretty good fit without a lot of complexity, so um, kind of the same same issue. You can also plot the fit, uh, this is the fit to the survival curve. Uh, you can plot the fit to cumulative hazard functions, uh, hazard functions, survival, um, all, all those things are, are options. Okay. I'm just running through the code to make sure I'm not going to uh, accidentally miss something that's really important later on, but um, you can kind of either do like I'm doing and just run some of these things. Uh, we do want to test when we pick a, a matching distribution, we want to test whether it's significantly different than um, you know the, the other more potentially more complex um, distributions. So Again, the moral of the story at line 292, once we run those tests, is that the log normal distribution is good enough. It, is, it gives us a close fit. Others are not significantly better. And so we are going to stick with, with that. And we, we can even 
We can do that with um, the log likelihood test or with the AIC Akake information criterion test that also confirms that log normal is, you can see here the number 235.34 uh, is just slightly uh, off of a gamma distribution, uh, but you know gamma it's just a little weird, it's a little less commonly used um, log normal is easy to, to fit and interpret. Okay, and we look at those graphically. Our final choice um, is if we were <coughs> to fit the um, the recurrence time not on a logarithmic basis, the, the best fit uh, in that case was a generalized gamma, looks like this on the left. Uh, the logarithmic fit is actually, even though the graph looks a little funny, the fit is significantly improved and it fits very well to log normal. So this kind of expresses our our final uh, setup. Okay, uh, let me do one other small topic here for this section then we'll close this section out. Um, the section 7 of the code, which is probability plots. Uh, so probability plot is another thing that you might want to look at to look at the distribution of your response variable. And um, I f the best package that I found to handle this uh, is this E1071 package in R and um, if we just pull up a little information on that, it is um, miscellaneous functions <laughs> uh, from uh, Viennese Department of, of Statistics at Technical University of Vienna. Um, and, you know, just some, some miscellaneous useful things. This happens to be one of them. Um, it just goes to show you that things in R can come from many different uh, places. And so this is what we mean by a probability plot. We are looking at the uh, recurrence time and that's plotted from 0 to again a little bit over 2500 um, versus uh, by default a normal probability. So we're looking for something that fits the red line. Now in this case we've got significant deviations uh, at the end, right? So that suggests that a straight up normal fit is not great. Um, if we look at a uniform fit to the data, actually of all of our options, uh, this is the best. So the, the prob plot function lets us specify which distribution we're trying to match it to. And that really helps us understand, again, the the way that response variable is distributed uh, quickly and graphically, we can do that. So I'm just plotting it against a few other things, exponential distribution, normal distribution, um, Weibull distribution, log norm, gamma. Okay, so we can see that actually all those look a little bit weird except for uniform, which aside from, you know, it's not a perfect fit, but that's closest. Um, so that's going to be useful to us to know as well. All right, so let me stop this section. When we come back, we're going we're gonna to delve a bit deeper into, um, into understanding the fit of our regression models. What we've done up to now is a kind of a setup to understand that. And we're we're going to get a bit further in just a, just a second.